creates a new one. They come together today asking for your blessing. Do you represent, do you who represent their families rejoice in their union and pray God's blessing upon them? That's weak, guys. Yes. Yes. Excellent. That's what we're talking about. You're right. How about this? Will all of you who, by God's grace, do everything in your power to uphold and care for these two persons in their marriage? Yes. 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 There we go. <laughs> Give us a We got it? Ah, uh, now we're talking. Excellent. Everybody here? Start over? Okay. All right. Hey, take two, guys. Take two. You're going to have to go all the way back. No, you're not. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. For the sake of all those who are, who are with us uh, at home or online this morning, we're going to do this again just for your benefit, all right? Friends, we are... Friends, we are gathered together in the sight of God to witness and bless the joining together of Adam and Stacy. The covenant of marriage was established by God who creates us male and female for each other. With his presence and power, Jesus graced a wedding at Cana of Galilee and in his sacrificial love gave us the example for the love of husband and wife. Adam and Stacy come to give themselves to one another in this holy covenant. Now, we all, all of us who have been married so far know that on the day of our, of our wedding, can, things can get a little stressful, right? And so we're going to do this one more time, and we're all going to declare to Adam and Stacy how much we love and support them with whatever fervor you can muster this, this afternoon, all right? So let's do this one more time. The marriage of Adam and Stacy unites their families and creates a new one, and they come together, whether you're here, whether you're here in the room, whether you're in the wedding party or at home, come asking for your blessing. So, do you who represent their families rejoice in their union and pray God's blessing upon them? Yes. There we, yeehaw, right? Absolutely. Will all of you, by God's grace, do everything in your power to uphold and care for these two persons in their marriage? Yes. There we go. You hear that? You are not alone. You are not alone. And so, that being said, I ask the two of you, as we start this service this morning, it's probably afternoon, we're not going to worry about that, right? Uh, uh, I ask you to declare your intention to marry each other, all right? So I ask you now in the presence of God and these people to declare your intention to enter into union with each other through the grace of Jesus Christ, who calls you into union with himself as acknowledged in your baptism. Stacy. Uh, do you, Stacy, will you take Adam to be your husband, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful only to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Mm. Hear that? Amen. Adam, will you take Stacy to be your wife, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, be faithful only to her as long as you both shall live. I will. My man. Excellent. All right, guys, come on up then. Beautiful. Beautiful, guys. In the... Fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians, uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus, and he's using uh, the example of husband and wife to describe the way that he relates to his church. But in so doing, he has this to say about husbands and wives. He says, uh, starting in verse 21 of Ephesians chapter 5, he says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, 
cleansing her by the washing of the water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant, as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Now, the kind of love that Paul's using here in Ephesians chapter 5 is what we call agape love. And agape love is the decision, it's the decision to be loving regardless of whether it's reciprocated or not. Agape love is waking up in the morning and saying, not saying, I'm going to meet her halfway. Or waking up in the morning and saying, I'm going to meet him halfway. Agape love, the kind of love that Jesus loves us with, and the kind that he calls us to love our wives and our husbands with, is the kind of love that says, I'm going to wake up this morning, and even if I feel like she's not giving any, anything at all, I'm going to go the whole way. I'm going to go 100% of the way, even if she's not willing to go anything. It's waking up in the morning and saying, even if it feels like he's not giving anything, I'm going to give everything. Because that kind of love isn't, isn't I will meet her halfway, or I will give as much as he gives. It's the decision. It's not about a feeling. It's not about um, compromise. It's the decision to give everything, regardless of whether or not he or she gives anything. That's what marriage, that's what healthy marriage requires. Now, we talked about this in, in, uh, in marriage counseling at the beginning of the year. So this is not new for you all, but today, but regardless of what yesterday was, regardless of what six months ago was, regardless of what two years ago was, today is a clean state, slate. This is the beginning of your marriage. It's not the beginning of your relationship. It's not the beginning of your life together. This is the first day of your marriage, and as such, it's a clean slate. Today is the day to say to each other, you are me and I am you. Before today, I was Stacy. I was Adam. Today, I'm no longer Stacy. I am us. I'm no longer Adam and you are Stacy. We are us. And to, for, from every morning, every morning, every day, every afternoon, every evening, from now until until the Lord takes one or both of you home to say, today I'm going to give everything I can possibly give, regardless of whether or not it feels like they're giving anything at all. You ready for that? Yep. Amen. In light of that joining that they are choosing to take part in together today, uh, they want to illustrate that by lighting a unity candle uh, this this afternoon. And so as our organist plays, um, be with them and uh, give them your, your emotional support uh, this afternoon as they illustrate that coming together, that, that joining as one uh, by lighting one candle together. Everyone has a job in this wedding. <laughs> Let's pray together. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, giver of all peace, bless and sanctify with your Holy Spirit, Adam and Stacy, 
who come now to join in marriage, grant that they may give their vows to each other in the strength of your steadfast love. Enable them to grow in love and peace with you and with one another all their days that they may reach out in concern and service to the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this point, we're going to have you all give your vows to each other. This is your verbal statement of what we just talked about. That in this moment, on this day, you give everything, you commit to give everything that you are and everything that you have to each other. You ready for that? Mm -hmm. All right. Adam, we're going to let you lead out in this one. All right. Adam, repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. But you need to look at your wife. <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Adam, take you, Stacy, to be my wife. I, Adam, take you, Stacy, to be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, or worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. Sickness and health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Mm. Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to look at his forehead, it's okay. We all have those. Okay. Repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Stacy, take you, Adam, to be my husband. I, Stacy, take you, Adam, to be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Amen. Do we have the rings? These rings are the outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, signifying to us this union between Jesus Christ and his church, just as it signifies the union between Adam and Stacy. And so, Adam, I'm going to ask you, as you place this ring on her finger... To repeat after me, Stacy. Stacy. I give you this ring as a sign of my vow. I give you this ring as a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. And that's all I am. And with all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. And in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, Stacy, take his ring, and as you put it on his finger, repeat after me. Adam, Adam, I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. And in the name of the Father. And of the Son. The Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You have declared your consent and vows before God and this congregation. May God confirm your covenant and fill you both with grace. All right, folks. Now that Adam and Stacy have given themselves to each other by solemn vows with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I announce to you that they are husband and wife. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Amen. Adam, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, I have the honor of presenting to you Mr. and Mrs. Adam and Stacy Odegaard.
concept of the of the of today a little bit differently than we would have liked. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask you to sit back down. As you sit back down in just a moment, Adam and Stacy are going to come and they're going to dismiss you by row. And that's going to be the best opportunity that you have today, other than hanging out in the lobby afterwards, to have a, just a, a little bit of time with them specifically, to give them a hug if you want to, uh, tell them how much you love them and how happy you are for them. And then uh, we're going to go to the lobby. They're going to cut the cake. And on your way out the door, uh, Adam and Stacy have... Have, uh, have gifts for you. There are bags on the tables. Uh, please take a gift and also grab your piece of cake as you walk out the door. And then once you're outside, it's only like 30 degrees. It's not that cold. The, uh, uh, as you're outside, then if you want to take your mask off and hang out and talk a little bit and eat cake, then, then, then feel free to do that. Understand? Excellent. I think Stacy might be taking her shoes off. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. I found a love for me. Darling, just dive right in. Follow my lead. Well, I found a girl. Beautiful and sweet Well, I never knew you were the someone waiting for me Cause we were just kids when we fell in love Not knowing what it was I will not give you up this time But I 